thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to, to, to make this presentation. So, um, my name is Cécile Fontaine, I work for Wagralim, and the topic of the day is the relocation of food change, um, a challenge for the food of tomorrow. Before um, going deeper in this presentation, let me just introduce uh, my, my cluster, Wagralim. Um, Wagralim is one of the six uh, innovation clusters uh, aimed at supporting the economic uh, activity and employment strategy uh, stra in strategic areas, sorry, in, uh, in Wallonia. We are mainly uh, specialized in the agri-food industry and we have today 254 members. Um, the uh, light uh, in, in our SEMA, uh, the light uh, color is the food companies uh, and our food companies are mainly composed of 90% of SMEs. Then we also have the services and consultancy companies and the research and training actors. That's the third part. So I'm not going to be too long on the today's situation. I think that you all aware are, and also <laughs> I, don't, I just have 20 minutes, so I'm not going to lose too much time on this. But of course, we had to face the COVID-19. Uh, I hope it's had and not have. Uh, we have, um, unfortunately, the war in Ukraine which led to um, a huge price inflation, uh, energy crisis, and uh, food shortage. And how do um, government react to this? It's, um, they just launched a couple of projects, um, a, a couple of initiatives, strategy, but also a report on the situation. Uh, the report were on the relocation, of course, but the resilience as well, and uh, the European strategy, how to react on this. Why do they have launched those strategy? um, strategies? It's uh, to have a better control of the value chain. It's important, the resilience uh, can answer this. Um, to work on the impact on the environment as well, uh, on trustability, and uh, finally on resilience. I'm gonna go deeper in this um, theme. Uh, before going deeper, uh, I think it's important to, to, to know what globalization is. Uh, according to me, there are three kinds of globalization. Uh, you have the necessary globalization, it's the crops that we can't have, can, can't grow here in Europe. Uh, and the second category is the unnecessary globalization, which led to, to sometimes to speculation. And the third category is the short-term necessary globalization. It's the glo globalization which is needed today, that can be um, just changed and uh, relocate in the future. When we speak about relocation, we can of course work on the two categories, the unnecessary globalization and on the short term gl necessary globalization. But relocation is not easy and we have to face uh, different challenges. There are three big challenges that I have pointed out here. Um, the first one is the uh, resilience, the resilience of a system. We can't speak about, uh, we can't speak about reterritorialization without speaking about resilience of a system. So we have to work on the whole value chain. We have to make a, a deep diagnosis of the situation. A second challenge is the competitivity of our enterprises. Um, and according to me, one of the key answer will be the in innovation. And the third challenge is, is the agricultural areas and the specificity. Of course, our countries and our region have a great role to play, but Europe as well. How Europe can play? Europe can just um, help to have a better coherence between the agricultural uh, policies. Um, at Wagwarim, we are involved in the S3 um, strategy, so smart specialization strategy. We are involved in three different strategies. One of it is the F3 ingredients for a circular economy. We have a consortium of eight different countries and uh, this strategy is ju just the, um, the beginning of uh, launching projects and uh, uh, we have launched this year a new project called Be Resilient. The aim of this project is uh, to use, to valorize uh, the biomass of uh, our industries. 
And uh, this project just started, but it's going to be very interesting, is interesting for our industries. And we can also share our knowledge with our uh, European uh, countries. The more diversified economies are also the, more, the most resilient. But when we speak about resilience, it's not just a question of, a, of uh, local production. It's also a question of um, how the ability of a country to uh, just to react in case of crisis. Let me give just a, a, an example. During the, the COVID-19 crisis, um, some of our uh, food and um, uh, drink industries um, started to produce some hydroalcoholic gel. This is very important because they help our system to, to go through this crisis. Well, it was one of the, of the answer. In this uh, map, you can see that um, the, uh, the dark blue are the most resilient uh, economies, but it never goes up to 15%. It's impossible. We are in a such globalized world that there is no country more resilient than 50%. And um, to better understand the resilience of a country, uh, I had the opportunity to follow a very nice presentation a couple of weeks ago um, from uh, Basic and Bio Eau de France. Uh, which, uh, uh, it was a presentation on uh, a diagnostic, uh, diagnosis sorry, of the regional food system. Uh, the, this diagnosis gave us a very systemic approach, which I like it very much because it doesn't give just the idea of the food sector, but what goes behind this. And so they, uh, they studied the challenges of re-territorialization, which is very uneasy to pronounce. So if you want to give, ask me something at the end of the presentation, you can, but you have to, <laughs> to pronounce it. Um, the second one is sustainability and uh, resilience. And uh, the, the, the third one is the prospective approach, the food in 2050. Um, they work on, of course, the environment questions, but uh, they work also on social questions, employment questions, and that's what uh, interests me a, a lot because it's a huge report, but you have everything on it. In order to map the resilience of a country, it's important to, 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 to start with this kind of report. And finally, so I said that there, there were three um, big challenges. Um, the, the third answer, uh, answer sorry, to, uh, to the third um, challenge, which was competitivity, the answer was innovation. And I want to give you an example, a concrete example, how innovation can help uh, to, uh, to go on uh, with relocation. My example is plant protein. According to a European uh, report, in 2017 and 2018, the European demand was 27 million ton, and only 10 million ton were uh, done in uh, were produced sorry in Europe. So it means, if you are good in <laughs> calculating, that 17 million ton are uh, imported. Um, from this, those 17 million tons, more than 75 percent are soya proteins. So I'm not going to go uh, deeper in environmental aspect, but it should be also taken into account. It came mainly from US and South America. Still, according to this report, in the coming years, uh, there will be a higher competition for protein supply. Why? Because of the global growth. Uh, I, I don't have to explain it. If there are more people, of course, we will need more protein and also because of a change in the, in, in the diet. There will be new diets. In Asia, for example, they are eating more and more meat, so we need plant protein to feed the animals. And in Europe, on the contrary, um, some, uh, some diets are developing more and more, which is the flexitarian uh, and vegan diets. Then we have uh, to, to produce more plant protein, but for uh, the, the, the human. That's why there is a very huge potential for European countries. But we also have to face a lot of challenges. Um, I already spoke about three big challenges of relocation. For the uh, local plant protein, we have to face other challenges, 
um, which are, of course, the, the, like the first one, the, competi the competition, the economic viability, but also the pest and disease. Uh, due to the new regulation, European regulation, we can't use um, everything to spray on our crops. It's good for the environment and diversity, but we have to find solution because uh, plantain crops, uh, uh, plant, pl plants, protein, sorry, are uh, quite affected by diseases. We also have to work on the stabilization of protein level and finally on agricultural yield. We have launched our own report in Wallonia just to have a look at what's the situation in Wallonia. And um, in Wallonia, the, the protein value change is not resilient enough. Why? Because there are a lot of transformers, but uh, we have not enough producers. That's why, thanks to um, the circular strategy of Wallonia, which is called Circular Wallonia, we launched uh, just a couple of months ago a project called uh, Wallopi, Wallonia P. And the aim of this project is to optimize the protein, uh, proteins value chain to innovation. We have focused on four uh, different world package. Uh, the work package first is uh, the quality. We are going to focus on protein and contaminants. The second one will be on sorting. Uh, we are going to have organic, conventional, and association. We have to be very careful with uh, gluten contaminant, for example. The storage, that's the world package three, uh, between human, uh, human proteins and animal proteins. And finally, we are going to uh, edit the guidelines uh, of the seed multiplication. This project is led by Wagralim, by the CRAW, which is the Agro, uh, Agricultural Research Center in Wallonia, and the CEPICAP, which is a pilot center uh, of uh, proteins and um, oil seed. This project involves more than two key players from Wallonia. The budget is uh, uh, 500,000 euros and it will last till July 2024. The key players are composed by federation, food companies, cooperative, uh, engineering companies, association and research center and university. Our approach, approach is a very transnational approach because um, we, think that, uh, we think that we have to learn of what our neighbors do and uh, in particular in France and in, uh, in Germany, in UK, they are already challenged this uh, plant protein project. And so we are uh, just gaining um, information from, uh, fr from those projects. So my conclusion. My conclusion is that relocation is crucial uh, in the food of tomorrow. But before considering relocation, it's very, very important to make a diagnosis, a deeper diagnosis of the food system. And a diagnosis not only of the world value chain, but if, if it's possible, you can enlarge it. Uh, it's, important, it's very important to map the resilience of the territories. And it should be done in your country, by your country, but by Europe as well. Um, the countries has a huge role to play to give the specificity of its region. Europe has a huge role to play to help to have more coherence between European agricultures. And finally, it should be done with innovation to be a more competitive um, system. So thank you for your attention. As I said, my name is Cécile Fontaine. I'm project manager, Circular Economy Wagralim. All my data are there. If you want to have more info about Wagralim, you could follow our newsletter. Um, just this, it's in French, <laughs> so I don't know if there are a lot of uh, French speaking here. And you can follow us also on our social network. Thank you.